Hey, girl. Hey. And happy new year, girl. Happy new queers, honey. Happy new queers. It is the yes. Lord's year of 2023, and we are back, 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 back again. I am very bemused. We, we... <laughs> That is a way to put it. Girl, aren't you glad I told you about Miley and Dolly last night? I am. I was I was like cuz I I mean, I don't pay I've I haven't watched the TV yeah. countdown in so long. Yeah. But when you said those two words to me, I was like I, we so, stopped Star Trek immediately. I was like, "Stop." <laughs> so, I I last year we we were we were watching um cuz we usually watch CNN. That's um, yep. It, 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 till Kathy Griffin got gone away right uh -huh. and it was like well what are we gonna watch what are we got and we kind of like piddled through them we we watched some anime that every year the, the polar bear cafe the little five sequence around uh from christmas to new year's it's it's one of the best sweetest sequences show. of things so that's that's one of our traditions we watch that every year uh -huh. um but then it's like well how are we going to and we go out to dinner and then we come back home and we're like well how are we going to count down to the new year so last year, Miley put on her concert with Pete Davidson as her guest host. Okay. And it was fantastic. Like, it was, oh. it was, was it SZA? Was that the one she brought on? Was that the person she brought on stage? I don't remember who. She brought, like, good acts. Okay. Like, really good acts. And this year, again, really good acts. Yeah, I saw the thing today. I watched it, the David Byrne. I was like, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you, if you watch the David Byrne and Sia thing, that's when you find out, oh, they're actually singing live because he was screwing up. Like it was, it was, <laughs> he was flat and it was screwing up. And there are some points in a uh, wrecking ball that Dolly sounds real breathy that I'm sure she does not want anybody to like, because that is so low for her. It was so good. Like it was, it was great. Uh, you know me. Any, you, all you have to see, all you have to say is the word Dolly Parton, and I will change the channel. <laughs> so, so girl, as you know, as you know, but my listeners don't know, my grandmother got COVID recently. I didn't want to talk. I'm still triggered. <laughs> Dear listeners, I, I, I would like to get on a little soapbox real quick. As we had to take her into the hospital because her lungs, you know, she couldn't breathe and she, her lungs full of junk her voice still ain't right and she's not wearing her hearing aid so she can't hear anything anyway lord have mercy it, it, she's one of us I anyway <laughs> anyway as she was as she was sitting there the doctor in the ER was like well you know glad she got her four vaccinations otherwise she'd be on a ventilator right now get up to the room the 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 like the doctor up there well be glad she took her vaccinations otherwise she'd be on a ventilator right now the, the pulmonologist came in. No, oh, she had her vaccinations. That's why she's not on a ventilator right now. Dear listeners, <laughs> all this is to say, please, <laughs> if you have not yet. Preach, I, honey. Uh, please, please take your vaccinations just because, you know, it seems like it's not, you know, as bad as it was. And there is a lot of immunity out there. If you had COVID at the beginning of this stuff, you were no longer immune, right? It, your, your immunity does not last forever. And we really don't know if it protects you from being hospitalized. Like getting the disease will protect you from being hospitalized. We know the vaccines do. We don't know if the actual like disease does. So I, I, I oh, man, Mame is sipping some tea. I highly, highly, highly suggest you get vaccinated. The more you know, star by my head. We've all had to deal with a little prick every once in a while. You can too. Girl. Little. Big. All over the place. Just. Girl. We, we, we. Economy size. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Full-fledged trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Dump truck girl. <laughs> a dump truck girl. I'm not a dump truck girl. <laughs> there ain't no room for that in my garage. <laughs> Y'all got a gallon jug. 
I'm gonna take it all. Girl, and last night as I was watching, I kid you not. So I, I, I was looking on. I, I was watching CNN to see if Don Lemon was gonna be drunk. Nope, not allowed. Not allowed. But he did say, "Do you think I'm drunk right now?" Multiple times. Like this is just how I live. Now his family was all turned with the tea. Yes. And then he's like, and here we have Usher. So it went over to Usher, who's performing somewhere, I think in Vegas. Yeah, he's doing the Vegas residency right now. And like, girl, I kid you not. Every black auntie. Every black woman from the age (laughs) of 35 to 65. Having their best life. Was just having a collective orgasm right there. (laughs) It was just, he was just dancing around his gay ass self. And just like they're having the time of their life, they're like, "Oh yeah, Usher, Usher, my baby, my baby." And, and his his hair is like gold colored right now, right? And it's got real light finger waves in it. <laughs> Lord, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't know if his finger waves were if he just you know combed it that way to have the little ridges. Either way, it, I, it they look too deep to be that to me. It looked like little micro finger waves to me. Are finger waves coming back on that level? I, I, I hope didn't. so. Then you can wear them in drag. Do you know how long it takes to put in a finger wave? Girl, speaking of things that take too long, dear <laughs> listeners. That's a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Patreon. If you oh go to patreon.com, Mims and Mame, <laughs> you can throw us some money. Hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know that we have another podcast? I did. Dear listeners, <laughs> it's called You Slay Me. It's our Murder She Wrote podcast. Hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know in this time after Christmas that we have merchandise? Dear oh. Dear listeners, if you go to mimsandmame.com, you can throw it. You can buy us some stuff. You can buy some stuff. I don't you know. You just stuff. do it. You can buy us stuff. <laughs> hey, babe. Yes. Do you know what I love? Um, Lots of things. Edible. That's true. Specifically, oh, my God. Last night I had this tuna. Oh, You were such girl. a foodie. Girl, we went to this Mexican restaurant. Well, it's Mexican seafood restaurant last night to celebrate the new year called Cortez and Raleigh. They had, okay. they had like, it was their waves of food to celebrate the new year. And like the surf and turf was spicy, uh, ribeye. And then the, the surf was, uh, tuna that was with like corn salsa over it that was served rare. Mm. But no, I like five star reviews, girl. Dear <laughs> listeners, if you enjoy this podcast, please leave us a review. Five stars preferred. <laughs> we we read each other the reviews, or I read them to Mame because I have. And I have a little kiki. I'm like, oh my god! I, I, I have the, I have like the a... thing that collects that collects all the reviews together, and I can just copy and paste them easier than you having like to go to the us. websites. You really like us. You do like us. You do really like us. Girl. Yes. Oh, we could talk about the next at the next <laughs> podcast. You ready to get in this podcast? Sure, let's do it. This is season four, episode five. <laughs> the girlfriend. Do 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 girl. I'm Julia Sugarbakers. I'm, I'm, I'm Julia Sugarbakers. I'm, I'm Julia Sugarbakers. I'm Julia Sugarbakers. And that, Marjorie, just so you will know, and your children will someday know, is the night the light went out in Georgia. The light went out, the light went out, the light went out, the light went out. And that is the night. The light went out in Georgia. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Well, now you do. We thought he was gay. I mean, this does not help the argument, but it's fine. <laughs> How much better would this have been had it been Loretta Devine? Oh, man. Because she would have been the right age for that right then. 
That would have been perfect too. Oh. Like they should have had a se- now that you have said that, they should have really leaned in like a series of guest starring of, girlfriends. Of, of bad girlfriends. Just That would have been yes. so good. Yes. But then then that would have taken away from But you know, just giving him like one every Every season. Every season. Just new girlfriend every season. Or two girlfriends every season. One yeah. one in spring, one in fall. Yeah. And then it could have been like a special girlfriend episode. Like you got used to Could you to imagine it. in the in the mid eighties, like there's so many amazing actresses yes. that could have like especially from people of color. Yes. Um to give yes. this show a little bit of some a little Girl, bit of at spice. one at one point it could have been an old woman, like it been Nell Carter. Like Mel Carter, it could have been Debbie Allen. Yes. Oh, because that was like that was like Cosby Show era Debbie yes. Allen. Yes. 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 They missed, they missed out. They did. They really, really did. Like Nell Carter, and uh, they could have gone to something because Nell Carter and Julie were both singing at the same benefit show. Uh huh. Oh uh-huh, my gosh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <sighs> and then Nell Carter says no at the end because. She's just too good for him or something like that. Uh, Even though he's much down. younger. Oh much gosh. younger. Oh, my gosh. What's wrong with... Uh, uh. I mean, hell, well, she wouldn't have been an actress at the time, but you could have even thrown in a Janet Jackson at that point. Yeah, Janet, well, she would have been a little young. Um, in in 86? Oh, 86, it could have been a young Whoopi Goldberg. Actually, was this... This was 88. This could have... Yeah, it could have been, been a Whoopi Goldberg, couldn't it? It could have been, yeah. Giving Julia a run for her money. Yep. Oh. Yup. <laughs> yup. Yup. Oh, yep. man. Instead, we got... Unnamed Actress 4. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Mary Jo was having an argument with a contractor. At the, the Dellingham's kitchen was supposed to be finished by Friday, uh-huh. and he was supposed to be there earlier this week to, like, get it done. Uh-huh. Uh, she has a note that says it was going to be finished by Monday morning. Uh-huh. It wasn't. He gives a bunch of excuses, so they just I love that him. part. I love that part. <laughs> that was cr- Him just rattling yeah. off the excuses was so good. Yup. Yup. Girl, I signed up for Tubi, and I keep getting little notifications for it. I'm so sorry. It's okay. The oblongs are on Tubi. <gasps> oh, I, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that, that'll be that'll be after what the next one we have. That'll be a quick oblongs, oblongs. Because there's only like seven episodes of that. Down in the valley of a chemical spill. Sorry, I love that. Theme so, song. so they're like, well. What, why don't we just call Mary Jo's like, why don't we just call Fritz? She said, Charlie's like, isn't he the one that <laughs> that put all the the wallpaper on upside down and fell asleep in the people's tub? Got drunk, fell asleep in the people's tub? I mean, <laughs> I don't know if we fun. want to call Fritz, but I'd like to party with Fritz. I don't know about you, girl. Fritz sounds amazing, actually. Doesn't he? I was like, oh, he's a, he's a good time. I like him. <laughs> And Julia's like, well, they don't really care unless they're doing the governor's mansion or Ted Turner's doghouse. Dear listeners, at this time, Ted Turner had a multi-million dollar <sighs> doghouse built for his dogs. It's fantastic. Yeah. Like it, it, it it's awesome. Ted Turner was was a fun dude. Like I, I miss I miss those kinds of ridiculous rich people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just did stupid stuff with their money. It was just like you know what? I don't have your money, but at least you're doing something stupid. Yeah, and like for those of you that don't know, Ted Turner founded CNN. Like mm-hmm. CNN, Turner TBS. Broadcasting, which is TBS, TNN. Yeah. No, that's the National Network. TNT girl. TNT, 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 TNT. TNT <laughs> I was like TNN, Andy. Yeah. TNT, Ooh, the Nashville, the, Nash- Nash- the Nashville oh, Network. Oh, the Nashville Network. Not the oh. Nashville Network girl that became later became Spike TV. Oh my gosh! Remember the good old days where they would have like the Gaither family home <laughs> homecoming on Sunday afternoons, and all of the country singers would sit around in a big circle and sing old gospel hymns. <laughs> Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> and do you remember when we got W? What was the one from Chicago that had Bozo the Clown on in the morning? Oh, uh, the the 
WGBN it's or W Super Station is Super Station uh W WGN. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. It's still around. Is it? Oh god. God, that was... I forgot about the Bozo the Clown being on. Hey guys, how are you? <laughs> Welcome, it's Bozo. Think <laughs> about that. We are just old enough that we were at the end of the Bozo uh-huh. the Clown era. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. I never thought of how privileged we are. But... Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, we had clowns ruined for us much earlier than kids did with it. So, so speaking of clowns, I was at I went to the Cherokee Casino. As you do. As you do. Uh, so <laughs> I, I was I, I my mother had to sleep. Alma was in the hospital. So my grandmother was in the hospital. My mom had to sleep. I was like, I need to get away so my mother can sleep. My mo- Dear listeners, my mother is a night nurse, so she needs to sleep. So I get in the car, and then I was picking my husband up from the airport in Charlotte. So oh, I you drive. Were doing some, you were doing some driving. I was, girl. I did that whole little triangle of North Carolina. Oof. So I did the three hours to uh, from Statesville to uh, Cherokee. Went, went went to my favorite Dunkin' Donuts. I don't know why that Dunkin' Donuts in uh, uh, Maggie Valley is the best Dunkin' Donuts I've ever been to, but it is literally the best Dunkin' Donuts I've ever been to. Okay. I, I don't have, I don't know, but they're, they're, I don't know. I don't know. It must be the racism. So I go up the mountain, get down the mountain. Anyway. <laughs> that pine scented racism. <laughs> I'm 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 in the I'm in the casino and I'm playing my card game which is four card poker. Anyway, it, it's 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 just like it's like blackjack but not. So I'm sitting there, and I'm with three other people. Like the dealer and all of us are from North Carolina. Okay. So the ones to my left are from Western North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know they they have my accent. All right. Exactly. The, 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 the dealers the dealers from Asheville from rural Asheville. Oh, okay. The the dude to my right has i think he's from eastern north carolina because he has 13 plus marbles in his mouth yes that sounds like are you doing oh wow that sounds like my ex's father girl we are sitting there and all of a sudden he's drunk too like he has been gambling it is it is 11 o'clock in the morning he has been gambling since at least 9 p.m the, the night before and he's he's got a little smell to him, which happens. And then all of a sudden, apropos of nothing, y'all ever been to Vegas and gone to Circus Circus? Now I I ain't scared of clowns or nothing, but there ain't no but clown there, and I'm a grown ass man. And those clowns come around, I jump back and had to run. It scared the hell out of me. How did we end up on this subject? A bozo. But how do we end up on Bozo? WG, WGBN or whatever. How do we get to WGN? Um, Ted Turner. Ted that's Turner. There you go. It's like, what is it? What is it? like, where in the world did this go to this? Well, Julia, Suzanne mentioned that Julia had a humiliating experience today. I think we just did too. She just went to the department stores and tried on a dress. Okay. Okay. And like I picture him Belk, girl. I think I think Belk at, as well. At the time, it was Belk. Yeah. Um, it, or Hudson Belk, depending on where she's from. Could have been a Dillard's. Could have been Dillard's. Could have been Dillard's. She is fancy, ain't she? Mm-hmm. Could mm-hmm. probably Dillard's in. Um, which still has the largest selection of Fiesta wear in the world. Thank God, Dillard <laughs> still exists. You know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so she she was trying it on, and she didn't like anything she was putting on. Okay, as that happens. So, so, so she tried on the dress that was in the dressing room, uh-huh. and as she was turned around, somebody opens the door, and a woman says, "What are you doing in my dress?" I mean, normally a person could just say easily, "Well, you left it in the dressing room." Why the hell did you leave the dressing room? Right, right? like, like. I mean, I could see how the thing that's interesting not to the me 80s. is. Not in the, like well, not in the eighties. That is not I, that you did. You changed. I the tried to log, I tried to logistically figure this part out, right? Mm-hmm. Because I thought to myself, <clears throat> did she leave the? Where did she leave the dress? Number one, and then number two, how long was she outside of uh-huh. the dressing room? Yeah. Because did Julia like walk out and just kind of wander the dressing so room? So here's area? the thing: 
it, it, the way that I remember 80s dressing rooms, the rooms had full length mirrors in them. Yes. And they sort of had individual lights over them. Correct. And at the, at, there's a little tiny hallway. At the end of a hallway, there was a bigger mirror, right? That's true. So she would have had to, the only time I've ever seen somebody come out was to go to the bigger mirror and see the full length and see the full of... length. And she would have seen her go into her dressing room. Right. So That's what I mean. I was like, woman, I don't like... This woman left her dressing room to go march around. Yeah. She left not, She left the dressing room area. Yeah, probably not wearing any shoes. Ooh. Walk around that horrible carpet of belk. I hope she wore undergarments. She probably wore hose. Getting all staticky from, <laughs> the, from that, from that polyply carpet at belk. <laughs> polyply. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I hate you so much sometimes. Well, Anthony's here. Hi, Anthony. And Lita left some messages for him. Oh, okay. Yeah, and blah, 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 pick up Chinese food without EMSG. Charlie's like, well, she seems a little picky, to which Anthony goes, well, she did pick me. Somebody said that to me once. Somebody, that was a compliment somebody gave me once about what them, they so. did pick you yeah that they were picky but they picked me what did they pick you for it wasn't did, dodgeball oh lord hey people liked picking me for dodgeball i was very good at dodging balls never mind i wish i hadn't said that out loud things changed later on in life didn't they all right <laughs> <laughs> Dodging them to wrangling them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wrangling them. Bro. Putting that little Sorry. lasso. <laughs> My little lasso of truth, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, so they start talking about contractors to Anthony and how yeah. hard it's been. And mm -hmm. Anthony's like, well, you know what? How about me? Why don't you pick me to be your contractor? He hands him a card that shows that he's got a contractor license. What? And that he, uh, that he, um, ha will, like has a ladies day and will eat a bug if it's late. Oh wow, Anthony, that and is he's, impressive. And Charlie's like, "Hey, I love it. You'll eat a bug." He's like, "No, that's just a gimmick." Oh. And he oh. saw he explains that he uh uses ex-cons for, you know, to, to work in the houses. And dear listeners, I'd like to give a little shout out to a place in Durham, North Carolina, if you're ever in the area. It's called Trosa. It's a nonprofit that does use ex-cons for things like moving. Um, they, they do some other, like, job sort of thing. So I, I've i used them myself to move. Oh, the only oh. thing they will not lift is... Um, it's ex-cons and addicts. So the only thing they will not lift or touch is alcohol because they... To quote them, we can't guarantee that's going to make it to those... From this place to the other, I'm like, it's only three miles, and they looked to be a blink. I was like, it's fine, I'll pick it up. <laughs> wow, it's it that's in the contract, too. They will not move alcohol. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, oh, and they're fantastic. They are fantastic. Dear listeners, it's called Trosa, it's in Durham. I highly suggest, highly suggest them. The more they, you know, they have moved a piano for me. Okay, pianos. Girl, there was we had a piano, the cursed piano. It was a free piano. It scratched my floor up, and then it because a wheel fell off of it, and then we had to move that son of a bitch upstairs because we were had some other issues downstairs, and then we had to get a mover in here. And, oh, and the thing the thing was out of tune all the time. Like it was so old, it really couldn't be tuned. It weighed like 500 pounds. Uh, cursed piano. Good Lord. Mm -hmm. That sounds terrible. But also. Yeah. It could be like its own musical. The cursed piano. Yeah. Right. If it was like symbolizing like a relationship falling apart at the same time, you know, 
it it is about the piano, but it isn't about the they piano. They already did that musical. Piano. It's called Rent. So we are um <laughs> The cursed everything. <laughs> <laughs> just quiet enough just quiet enough. I know. <laughs> so joy is like joy's a little apprehensive because it's the big job right yeah it's a huge job and she's like and just aside anthony's like when you meet lita you're gonna meet her soon just remember to call me the director of transportation because to her titles matter a lot and suzanne's like of course titles are important because People could, if they weren't, people could just call them Miss America, and they they wouldn't, you know, they if would they just were the be first, Miss first runner up. That's right. Yeah. They could be first runner up and be the Miss Americas. Yeah, don't you know? So they're like, okay, we're desperate to be a contractor. And Julia's like, let's let's make this a professional interview for this. Do you have any experience? And he's like, I put up a <laughs> spice wa- rack for us, w- old widow. <laughs> and everybody's like, you're hired. <laughs> Oh, those old widows can be tricky. They can be. They can be. I can't. Maybe one day, I maybe I'll just start dressing like an old widow. Oh my gosh! Yes, just black like Miss Haversham. Black lace, lots of black, black lace. lace. Black, no girl, no girl. Dark gray. I want to be like silvered lace. Ooh, yeah. If I'm a widow, I'm just gonna wear red, dark red velvet. That's oof. Oh, it's so warm in Miami. <laughs> I'll do what I have to. But, but not black velvet in a slow southern star. Make love to that microphone, A new honey. religion that'll bring you to your knees. Yes. Black velvet, if you please. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. I love that. That was nice. Aren't you glad that Raja won? Yes. <laughs> Yes, very much so. Um, I, I I don't know if you caught it, but we, we, we didn't mention this. Dear listeners, this is the Canada versus the world. A while back, um, in one of the first few episodes, Victoria Scon is talking about um, the word fish and how she does not like the word fish. I remember that, yes. And I don't know if you caught it, but she said, as a born female, not assigned female at birth, not any kind of. She used some very transphobic language for a hot second. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And we're like, oh, oh, I guess the Brits still can't get this right. <laughs> Even when they're trying to make a point. Uh huh. That's beside the point. Let's get back to this. Girl, so I had a, th- just by the way, when that whole thing got started, I just started tuning out. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, Lord, here we and go. And let me just tell you, let me also tell you, Silky Nutmeg Nosh did not beat Rita Baga <laughs> at all. Like, Yes, but honey, it, it, was, it made for a com- – we knew that Rita won't go in no way. And it made for a compelling finale to have the serve girls going up against each other. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Those that's producers true. knew what they were doing. Huh? Those producers knew what they were doing. That's true. I mean, yes, that is absolutely true. But <laughs> that's one good way to make sure that you probably get near the finale is make a, align yourself with somebody that's very good because uh-huh. that way you'll find out later you'll be pitted against each other. <laughs> I will gladly take the fall for second place. I'll gladly take the fall for second place. So we're, we're at the Dellinghams now, and they're looking at this horrible kitchen like nothing's done. Mm-hmm. Like, like... Literally nothing. It looked terrible. And they start talking about Jimmy and Rosalind Carter and Habitat for Humanity. Yes. And the, Julia goes off on the Reagans, how they have done nothing since presidents <laughs> leave the presidency. <laughs> Except, you know, having huge parties and taking the money for themselves. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Suzanne's like, I know where this all started. This started when Nancy Reagan was wearing that white dress with the, that one uh, arm or one shoulder white dress with those pearls. It looked so pretty. And Julia just said, I don't know what they're all up in arms about. She, Fli- uh, Wilma Flitzel's been wearing that for years. 
it's funny because when she said that, I uh -huh. literally remembered that outfit like so yep. distinctly that it was like, ah, it was, it was jarring. I was like, oh, gosh, I do remember that outfit. But she's right. Wilma did do it better. Mm -hmm. Suzanne is also upset that she thinks Lita's exploiting Anthony. But that's Suzanne's job. Exactly. <laughs> and and Charlene's like, well, maybe she's at Suzanne's like white. <laughs> Charlie goes, black people can be just as offensive as white people. Suzanne just screams, thank you, Coretta Scott King. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. That is a, <clears throat> I think it's funny, though, because when they were talking about that, mm -hmm. it actually, there was something interesting because it is very foreshadowing of our current uh -huh. this, like things that are happening right uh -huh. now. Because you do actually have this new emerging like black GOP and, uh -huh, and uh -huh. they very much act kind of like Lita. I mean, yeah. in all honesty, yeah. she kept calling him like the black Donald Trump. You'll be the black Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh boy. Yep. Like, well, that's sad. <laughs> yeah. Lita would never vote for Republican though. Why not? Not yet. Not, not at this time. Not, not in the 80s. I don't know. She might have because I mean, they are in Atlanta and there is that, there is that subset of Atlanta mm, that's that true. That's they, they true. cared much more about their that's tax true. bracket than their mm -hmm. actual culture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a lot of research or some research is now showing millennials as they get older. Um, most other, the baby boomers, um, the greatest generation, a, a, and Gen X, as they've gotten older, they've gotten more conservative, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, they tend to vote a little more Republican. Millennials have not, <laughs> and most of it is because they they never got rich. I yeah. mean, literally, that's the thing about this whole thing that I've been uh -huh. wondering myself. I'm like, guys, you do realize at some point, because mm -hmm. of the way that the classes are now and the wealth inequality, mm -hmm. that thing <laughs> is not happening anymore. Mm -hmm. So what are we uh -huh. going to fight for? So, I mean, yeah. I'm not surprised. Isn't it? That's so depressing to me, though. I mean, it all it always has been, but just the idea of money and holding on to money and keeping your money makes you vote against whole groups of people, mm -hmm. and they're, mm -hmm. ugh, it just. Mm -hmm. ugh. Oh, oh, when Trump when Trump uh, started running for president at my job, like, you know, th th there was I worked with a bunch of older black people, right, mm -hmm. who rural salt of the earth people both black and white um and then there were the rich white guys they had they were really good friends like they were all really good friends they were all same economic status now right. but at the time but when they started and years ago the white people had more money than mm -hmm. the black guys who came to work there because they worked the way up um and the 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 old sort of patriarch black dude had to have a coming to jesus with these guys and i heard it i was he was letting them absolutely <laughs> have how could you call yourself my friend and ever think to vote for this man this crazy ass man this crazy ass man who just who said absolute terrible thing uh -huh. to a whole swath of uh -huh. our population oh, yeah, yeah 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 and it's like that what do you what do they always say about um fiscal republicans are like they vote with their they vote with they vote while holding their nose mm -hmm. like and, and i think it was all like you know you guys could just not do that you know yeah. you could actually because first of all most of the democratic party are still very much about people making money it's yep. not it's not full of a bunch of socialists it's nope. really not so nope. i don't know why and how over the over the decades and decades and decades they still act like that group is like that. I'm like, have you met the Democrats? They are also millionaires. They want to keep mm -hmm. their money as well. <laughs> well, Anthony and Lee are here. <laughs> and they, there's a discussion about will Anthony be able to get done by Friday at 5. Anthony, <laughs> Anthony's not so sure. The, the, the ladies are all like, yeah, well, we need it done by 5 because Dellingham's going to be here. Lee is like, well, he could just walk because, you know, he's your last hope. And she's like, He's like, Anthony's like, no, no, no. I owe these women a lot. I will do my best. Talking on talking on behalf of Anthony. Mm -hmm. Telling his work business. So we're at Sugar Bakers. 
Suzanne goes up to Mary Jo. Do you like <laughs> Anthony's girlfriend? She's like, well, I don't really know her. Neither do I. <laughs> and like, she goes around to everybody. They're all like, make you up excuse why they don't answer. And she's like, okay, so it's unanimous. <laughs> it's unanimous. <laughs> um, and Charlie's like, this reminds me of a book I read once where a guy, co- girlfriend comes between her man and his job. And uh, y'all don't want to hear about this. They didn't. <laughs> And she Suzanne, was right. said, Suzanne said it's definitely interfering with his work because last night she called at 10 for him to, for Anthony to come over and open up a mayonnaise jar. And, and he, he said, said no. no. Which that is very unlike Anthony. So, I mean, I think that that's not a bad thing. That he was Anthony probably is... getting that poo nanny. Oh, honey, no. Oh, Suzanne interrupted Anthony getting busy. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Mm. That is not something I wanted to think about at all. Well, Julia calls Lita a yuppie, and Julia hates that phrase. So Charlene goes into a story about, I don't know where it came from, about the Dairy Queen manager who was there, <laughs> wor- worked for a week, and was immediate, the fastest person ever promoted to a Dairy Queen manager. And 25 years later. <laughs> 25 years later, he's still a Dairy Queen manager. Because he had a good first week. That was uh-huh. all. <laughs> yeah. I did find that to be funny and also relatable. It made me think of her hometown. <laughs> well, the, uh, Anthony's accountant comes in. He's a very Ben Stiller type. Yes. Not Ben Stiller. Uh, ben, ben Stein. Ben Stein, thank you. <laughs> um, God, Ben St- that would have been a nonsense right there wasn't it hey hey, i'm here for the with the money and the oh yeah especially 80s ben stiller Uh oh boy Uh, are you a fan of ben stiller i like a few of his movies yeah which not a lot um i did actually enjoy uh zoolander i like zoolander that that's that's and I really enjoyed although he wasn't necessarily the star he was like the villain i really enjoyed dodgeball um, because I just I, thought dodgeball was, didn't do it for me. Well, I mean, like this is, I like flirting with disaster, but that's Ben Stiller not really being Ben Stiller. That's that's because Mary Tyler Moore was being a badass. Oh, and uh, Tay Leone. I yeah. you you know you know how my feeling my feelings for Madam Secretary. And I seem to remember, although I haven't seen it in a long time, uh-huh. I, I do remember I actually did like the sketch comedy show that they did on MTV back when uh-huh. it was like Janine Garofalo and all of them. I hate to admit, I hate to admit, hate to admit that I like Tropic Thunder. Why do you hate to admit it? It's a great movie. That blackface the entire way through. Okay, let's talk about that real quick, right? Okay. Obviously, we're going to... Well, no, let's save that for next week. You sure? Because next week is that episode. <laughs> ah! <laughs> We will put a pin in that. <laughs> I can't oh, wait to get into that. Oh man, because it's <sighs> it's it's so it's so much deeper than people realize. If so, it's fine. I'm mean, it's not fine. The same the same for Tropic Thunder. They actually have that thing in common, but we'll talk about it next week. So Anthony <sighs> Anthony's accountant was arrested for embezzlement. So now now we're back at the Dellinghams, and Lita comes in. Hey, girl. Hey. And Anthony's very upset because oh. the kitchen is not finished. It he looks got the bill finished. Of, he got the bill of materials and the workers cut corners. Like <gasps> the stuff's just going to like pop back up in a month and, or or year or two. And oh, no. Lita says, oh, that's fine. By that time, we could all be dead. She is not a cool character mm-hmm. at all. And Anthony's like, look, me and these ladies trust each other. And I want to do a job well done. And nothing's going to get between me and... And that. And if you don't like it, walk. And she's like, are you saying work's more important than your personal life? Yes. You're going to be the Black Donald Trump! And to to that, I would say, technically by Anthony's actions, he isn't going to be the Black Donald Trump mm-hmm. because what his workers did is what Donald Trump would have done. Yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> like, honestly... So uh, Anthony sends Lita to stall so, because he knows that the girl, that the ladies are going to be there early. 
So we're at Sugar Bakers, and Lita, Lita tries to stall. Basically says, why does everyone hate me? There's a little bit of conversation, and Julia's like, well, you're pushy and opinionated, and you remind me of someone. Charlene just goes, you? I was going to say Leona Helmsley. Which, same thing. <laughs> Remember well, when we, we were weirdly obsessed with Leona well, Helmsley when we were kids? <laughs> we were, but I we were like unhealthily obsessed with Leona Helmsley yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. That well, it was she, very. She was a she was a mean nonsense. What she was. It's just I. Sometimes now when we talk when we go backwards in time during these episodes and these references uh-huh. come up, I do try to figure out like what was going on with these two kids. They're obsessed with Leona Helmsley. Well, so now we're back in the kitchen, and the ladies show up. Anthony's cleaned all up, so it looks it looks good. Except for it's miss, missing the Mister Coffee, as Lisa right. said. Um. Anthony's like, hey, y'all, I have something important to tell you. But Lita told her everything. And Suzanne says the best stall job she's seen since her second wedding night. <laughs> Perfection. And Julia says, "I when I first met Lita, I didn't like her. And when I met her again, I really didn't like her. But she obviously cares about you a lot. So there's that. <laughs> and Mary Jo's just impressed that it's an honest contractor. Um... Charlie's like, well, you never thought you'd have to eat a bug. And he's like, I was never going to eat that bug. They brought a bug, bug. for him to eat. Hey, Mame. Yes? Did you find yourself a Miss Georgia world? I didn't really like anybody's outfits that much this week. I I picked one because I I I, I liked her her tent. Um, I like Suzanne in the beginning. It's a it's a nice purple check with the purple up underneath. Oh yeah, I mean it's cute. I mean it was just nothing this week was like oh you know like it was usually like there's at least one outfit where I'm kind of yeah. like ah you know. Well, I mean Charlene can't really wear anything right. I think that they're dressing people in bigger clothes since Charlene has to wear bigger clothes. Maybe. Like, I know, I know Suzanne is just going to be in like, because Charlene's dress was just like, it was just like a sack of potatoes. Like it, it was, was like, it was. good Lord. With, the, with ugly ass bow on it. Which just reminds us like also just how terrible maternity clothes used to be for women. It's like ladies just have a belly guys. You can still make nice clothes for them. Yeah. Well, Mame, did you enjoy this episode? Uh, Nope. <laughs> I genuinely, I genuinely, I Man, like this episode. No. I didn't like it. No. Well, I didn't man, like it. neither did I. I found it, <laughs> I, I found like... her very obnoxious and not in a good way. I, I, I found, I found I... that, and I don't think Anthony would ever be attracted to her. Yeah, um, I, my main problem is that I didn't like, obviously, because it's still in time, we're going to see her. Um, but I really hate that the one kind of redeemable quality of mm-hmm. hers happened off camera. Mm-hmm. I really wish rather than her doing that thing that she did, they had mm-hmm. had that for just a, a split second. And then she broke down and did it mm-hmm. because then we could have at least humanized her character because man, they just made her into a monster, like just a complete monster up mm-hmm. and down. So mm-hmm. yeah. That's why I didn't. I mean, the rest of it was fine. I mean, it's, you know, it's a normal kind of filler kind of episode, but I just wish I don't know. I don't like when they make a character that much just like one dimensional. Well, man, why don't you tell our dear listeners where they can find you? Okay. Hello, dear listeners. It is I, Auntie Mame, your favorite relation? You can find me on the social media at Auntie Mames with an S. You can find me in real life performing improvised comedy with the Villain Theater in Miami. You can find out more about them at villaintheater.com. I also host amazing colossal karaoke every Thursday night at Killy Riddle on Miami Beach. And I am a host of the Black Market, a bi monthly 
dancing, singing, burlesque, and rock music event. It happens in downtown Fort Lauderdale. You can find out more about them at theblackmarketmia.com. How about you, Mims? Hey, y'all. I'm the Divine Miss Mims. You can find me online at Divine Miss Mims. Hey, man. Yes, yes, yes. Where am I at? Yes. Did you know we have a Patreon? What? Dear listeners, if you go to patreon.com, Mims and Mame, throw some money. Please. Hey, Mame. Yes. Do you know we have another podcast? I, I, yes. It's called You Slay Me. We it's a murder show podcast. <laughs> What'd you say? I said we may film it today. <laughs> get it wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know we have merchandise? Merchandise. If you go to mimsamame.com, you can buy a nice shirt. <laughs> hey, babe. <laughs> yes. Do you know what else I like? No. I like reviews. Dear listeners, if you would leave us a review, <laughs> a nice five star, it would really make our day or it month. Would. Or a year. No, mostly just day or month. <laughs> day or month, depending on how good it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mame, do, do you have anything else to add? When's your next single coming out? Oh, oh, that, <laughs> I need to get my, we, we, we were, ta- my husband and I were talking about it before COVID, and then COVID hit us, and we're like, oh, well, that's, so we'll start talking about that again. That, okay. that'll be in my Q1 2023. How's that? <laughs> That's so corporate of you. Q1 2020. I also have a few other things planned in Q1 2023 that I had planned last year, but didn't do. So hopefully we'll try that again. Yes. I've, I've been practicing my makeup. I'm both excited and frightened. Good. You, you finally got an audition for Dragula? Why don't you say goodnight, man? <laughs> goodnight, man. Bye, y'all.